let's talk about scientific notation. Now, scientific notation is a way of writing either very large or very small numbers. Um, and we're going to use it as powers of 10. Why do we want to do this? Let's look at a couple of numbers that are very, very large and very, very small. This is the mass of a hydrogen atom in grams. Okay, so in essence it's weight, but they scientifically it's, it's called mass. Okay. Now, if I'm dealing with anything dealing with, a, with the weight or the mass of a hydrogen atom, how easy would it be if I had to write it each time to drop a zero or to write it in a way that something was wrong or just get tired of it? This can also be written as 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24. Now, on the flip side, if I have the mass of the moon, this is the mass of the moon or the weight of the moon in kilograms. And there are just a bunch of zeros and commas. I mean, I could make all kinds of mistakes with this. Or if I was doing computations and had to include this, write it down every time, it would be really confusing. What I can do instead is write this as 7.35 times 10 to the 22. Now that's a lot easier to work with in terms of writing it down. It is, and that one's not supposed to be there by the way, that's my fault. Um, it's, that's a lot easier to write. It takes up a lot less space. It is it's very meaningful. I know immediately by looking at this, this is a tiny, tiny number. This is a great big number. But now before we can use things in powers of 10, we need to understand what the powers of 10 are. Okay, now of course a power is an exponent. And so I've created a chart here for you with what this means, the exponential notation, what scientific notation would be, what the number is, what it is in words, and possibly what it'll show on your calculator. This is the way it shows on mine, but you would want to uh, do that and you will explore your calculator to see whether you can do, if you have to put it in a setting for scientific notation, exactly what you have to do. Okay, now what do you notice about this table? Well, these go from very small to very large numbers. And notice the exponents here in either of these go from a negative number and they get larger and larger and larger until you have a zero exponent, which is just the number one. Then your exponents get larger and larger. 10 to the third is a thousand. 10 to the sixth is a million. To the ninth is a billion. To the tenth, or excuse me, to the twelfth is a trillion. So again, you have it in scientific notation. Here is the number that represents it. So let's start out by looking at there are 1 billion seconds in 30 years. A billion seconds in 30 years. We want to write 1 billion as a number and in scientific notation. Now you may know this, that a billion is a one with nine zeros. So as a number, this is one, zero, 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 zero. And in scientific notation, that is one times 10 to the ninth. If someone says that you have a one in a million chance of winning the lottery, that means your chances would be one millionth. So let's look at one millionth and write it as a number. Zero point, and let's say I have one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five, and a one. If I write it in, in scientific notation, that becomes one times 10 to the negative six. Okay. These are equivalent, these are equivalent. All right, so let's look and see how we're going, what exactly scientific notation is, because it's very specific. 
Scientific notation is a number times 10 to the n. This number has to be between 1 and 10. And we'll go look in the next page of how to recognize whether it's truly in scientific notation or not. And n is an integer, which just means it is it can't be a fraction or a decimal. Now, note that this number here, it can equal 1, but it cannot equal 10. It has to be less than 10. All right, so how do I write a number in scientific notation? Okay. Well, first thing I'm going to do is locate the decimal. So in this situation here, the decimal is right here. And I need it to move to right here. Well, how many places do I move the decimal? Well, let's see if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and finally 13 places. The number of places I move the decimal point is the exponent. If I'm moving it to the left, if I'm looking at a large number, it is a, pow a uh, positive exponent. Whereas if I have an, a smaller number, a number smaller than 1, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to move it a different direction and that means I will have a negative exponent. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I moved it 15 places since it's smaller than 1 then my exponent is negative. Now, of course, how do you tell if it's larger or smaller than 1? Well, you look at the zeros. Here is 1. Anything that a decimal with a 0 point something is going to be smaller than 1. Anything larger is going to have zeros after the 1. Okay. All right, well, let's look at a couple of numbers and see if they are actually in scientific notation or not. Okay. It has to meet two conditions. The number to the left of the decimal has to be between 1 and 9. And the exponent has to be a whole number, an integer. Okay, so let's look at these and see if this is yes or no. Okay, so let's look at this. This number is between 1 and 9, so that checks. Negative 12 is an integer, so that checks. So yes, this is scientific notation. This number has to be between 1 and 9. So it is not, must be 1 to 9. The exponent is OK, but it has to meet both conditions, so this is a no. This one is not between, this must be, 1 to 9, 32 is bigger than 9. The exponent is OK, but this is a no. And finally, 1.225 times 10. Now, one of the things that you need to know is that 10 is equal to 10 to the first. That was on the chart. So 10 is 1 times 10 to the first. So I can just put an implied 1 there. We normally don't put that. But this is OK. 
this is okay, so the answer on this one is yes. All right, now we want to identify each of these as larger or smaller than 1. And we can do that by looking at the exponent. The exponent here is positive, so that means it's larger than 1. My exponent here is negative, so that means it's smaller. My exponent is negative, which means it's smaller. My exponent is positive, which means it's larger. OK. All right, so we know that we have to get one digit to the left between one, between 1 and 9. And then if it's a large number, we're going to, however many places we move the decimal, we're going to turn that into a, um, an exponent. And if it's, that's going to be positive. If it's smaller, it's going to be negative. Okay, so if I have the debt in U.S. dollars, let's see, how many is that trillion? So that's $17 trillion. Wow, okay. So I need to take the decimal and move it from here to here. So I'm going to move it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and finally 13 places. So it's going to be 1.7345 times 10 to the 13th. Now, it didn't say anything in here about rounding, so I'm not going to you know, spend a lot of time. We'll, we'll talk about rounding as we go. I could have said to two decimal places. It doesn't really matter at this point. Okay. All right. The next one, the debt in Germany is, let's see, that's five trillion. Okay, so their debt is pretty high too. I wonder if the, how proportionate that is per capita. I haven't, I didn't look at that. Okay. So let's see here. I need to move the decimal from here and it needs to move to here, so there is one digit to the left. And I'm going to end up moving that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that is going to be times 10 to the 12th power. All right, let's look at China. Their debt is 3 trillion, so I know I'm going to have to write it as 10 to a positive exponent. I need to go from here to here. This is going to be 3.0, and I'm doing this the same as last time, but it's good practice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so it's 10 to the 12th. Okay, all right, so let's look at different atoms and the diameter of their nucleus, not the mass. We're going to look at the diameter of their nucleus. Hydrogen is 0 0.000000175. So we need to take the decimal and move it from here to where there is one digit to the left, so between the 1 and the 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And since it is smaller than 1, it is going to be 1.75 times 10 to the negative 15. If I'm looking at the diameter of carbon, I need to move it to right here so I know the numeric part, the value of A is 2.2 times 10. I know it's going to be negative, and it's how many places I move the decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's 10 to the negative 11.
And the last one here, I need one digit to the left. So this is going to be 5.96 times 10 to a negative number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So to the negative 10. All right, so if you're given a number, you can write it in scientific notation. If you're given something in scientific notation, you can write it as a number. If I have 1.2 times 10 to the 6 joules, and we're going to talk about joules in our, in our next section, well, I'm going to start out with the 1 and the 2. And I am going to move my decimal six places to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then I fill in everything with zeros. Okay. If I have 6.9 times 10 to the negative 3, then I know I'm going to have to start with the 6 and the 9, but the negative 3 tells me I'm going to move the decimal 1, 2, 3 places, fill in my zeros, and I have 0 0.0069. Okay, now there are some common powers of 10 that you may or may not know um, that we're probably going to use quite a bit. And one of them is millions. So if I look at my table, if I want to write it as a power of 10, there are approximately 2.2 million marriages per year in the U.S. So million, if I look at my table up here, is 10 to the sixth. So million is 10 to the sixth. So 2.2 million is 2.2 times 10 to the sixth. The estimated world nuclear energy production is 2,608 billion kilowatt hours. So if I look up billion on the table, billion is 10 to the ninth. So this is 2,608 times 10 to the ninth. Now, is this in scientific notation? No, it is not because 2608 is not between 1 and 9. Okay. But if I have 2608, I can write that as 2.608 times, and let's see what I did here. I've moved my decimal 1, 2, 3 places to the left, so that, would, that number is bigger than 1, so it's 10 to the third. So now I have 2608 times 10 to the third, which is the oh, 2.608, excuse me, which is the same as the 2608 times 10 to the ninth. Now it's probably easiest if you just do this in your calculator. So if I have this on, if I have 2.608 times 10 to the third times 10 to the ninth and hit enter, I get 2608E12. Now, like I said on here, this on the table, this is what appears, would possibly appear in your calculator. The E means it, it's 10 to that exponent. So this becomes 2.608 times 10 to the 12th. So that is the proper 
notation for this. Now, those of you who remember your algebra, also remember if you have 10 to the third times 10 to the ninth, you just add your exponents. Okay. Okay. The next couple of questions are just really how to use your calculator and do this. So if I want to find each value, I find it a good idea to put parentheses because this represents a single number. In multiplication, it doesn't really matter, but it will in division. Okay. So I just like to put it in parentheses. If I want to multiply 3.1 times 10 to the 7th, times 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. Then I'm just going to write that as 3.1 times 10 to the 7th. And you don't have to put the times in there again. 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And hit enter. Now what that gives you in your calculator is 14,260. Now if it asks for it in scientific notation, then I'm going to have to write it as 1.426 times 10 to some power. And how am I going to find that power? Well, let's see how far. This is bigger than 1, so it's going to have to be a positive exponent. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's times 10 to the 4th. All right. I'm going to do the same thing here. If I'm dividing, I want to put all of this in parentheses and then divide by all of this. So in my calculator, 1.27 times... 10 to the 8th divided by 8.1 times 10 to the 2nd and I get 1.2 So this equals, oops, and I'm sorry, I can't see that. I'm going to have to move that around. This becomes 156790.1235. Okay. Now, if I convert this to scientific notation, I'm not going to deal with this because this really does not have a lot of bearing on it. So what I'm going to do is write this as 1.5679 times 10 to some power. Well, I'm taking this and I'm moving it one, two, three, four, five places. It's bigger than one, so it's going to be to the fifth power. Now, in our previous section, we talked about finding a percent increase which is the same thing as finding a relative change. So how are we going to do that if we're dealing with scientific notation? It says here that in 2000, U.S. healthcare expenditures were about 1.4 trillion, and in 2016, the amount increased to 3.3 trillion. So let's write each of these in scientific notation. So 1.4 trillion is going to be 1.4 times 10 and trillion is to the 12th power, if you look at your table. 3.3 trillion is 3.3 times 10 to the 12th. Now, to find the percent increase, the relative change, it is the reference value minus, I'm sorry, this is compared value. minus reference value all divided by reference value. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We are comparing 
2016, so this is our compared value. And this is going to be our reference value. So I'm going to take 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 12th minus 1.4 times 10 to the 12th and divide that by 1.4 times 10 to the 12th. Now once again, I'm going to do this all in my calculator. So I'm going to do 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 12th minus 1.4 times 10 to the 12th divided by 1.4 times 10 to the 12th and I get 1.3 1.357. Now I need to take that and convert it to a percent, so I move my decimal two places to the right, and that gives me 135.7%. Okay, the end.